He's the leader of this, so I'm you're the Commander Beaver. I am not the leader. All right, so uh, I'm uh, Norris Andrews with Hal right now. Uh, I'm here, I'm interviewing Miss Jenna Pond. And um, what is your piece today? Where's my piece? Like, what is your piece? It's over there. That's uh, it's very nice. Uh, can you tell me what it's about and for what class? It is for honors geometry. It is represented by a pineapple. I took the outside of geometry of a pineapple and the inside and used it as a pattern-like thing. That's about it. So, uh, for honors geometry, uh, like, what was the, like, the assignment was about, like, geometrical shapes, right? Hold on. Yeah. Testing. Are we good? All right. So, um, so I see the assignment was about geometric shapes and shaping, like, yeah. like symmetry, what, like, yeah. symmetry. So, um, like, what choice, what inspired you to choose pineapple? Sure, it just had so many shapes in it that it just showed like so many different variations of shapes inside and outside. So I wanted to take both of it and combine it. But yeah. So yeah, uh, it's a nice piece here. You know, I see yours, which is I like the colors and the vibrancy of it. I think it's a, I think it's a nice piece. You know. You should ask Zoe. Zoe's is better. So like, what else do we have here? About, uh, so, uh, I'm with Zoe here. Zoe Chini, hi. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about well, what you did here? What? Can you tell us a little bit about what you did? Mine specifically? I mean, sure, you can also explain all this as well. Um, what is this, what is this for? Uh, we're just interviewing people about their stuff, so. What did you do here? Um, this one's mine. I based my artwork off of um, our math classroom. So like that's the teacher and all the like squares and the circle is all the kids in the class. And then the little rat red line is supposed to be like the spread of knowledge from the teacher throughout the class. And it was based off of, oh Jesus. It was based off of um, this guy named Kazmir Melovich and he had something similar to this. So uh, I see a piece that's actually quite nice with the, uh, I like the attention to detail in terms of like the desk and the students and like the teacher. Thank the spread of knowledge, honestly, is a good idea. I wouldn't have thought of that. So, but it looks like all in all, even with some of the other, even with some of the other things we have here, um, it's gonna be, I think it's nice. So uh, thank, you. thank you for your time. Thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> well, you so I see you're working with these guys too. I'm doing good. How are you? I see uh, you're working with these, with this group here. Yeah. Honors so uh, what's your piece? My piece is right here. It's based off of the Salamic Art with the 12 point stars. Uh, you know, I, I'm trying to make it expand through the whole piece. Because their art's huge, infinite. So uh, yeah, I, I do like the uh, the shade of blue you use there. I like the orange as well. I like all the colors. It said they're based off Islamic stars, like Islam Islamic art. Yeah. Like like yeah. what did, what like inspired you to sort of choose that? Uh, I love history, and so history being mixed with both math, math and art, I love to be able to do that. So that's what inspired me. Yeah, and uh, not only you, but like like Jenna explained and uh, and uh, Zoe explained. I do like all y'all's pieces, and I do like the inspiration behind them. So and they're pretty cool to see here. If we get one more shot of the, uh, we get one more shot of everyone's piece here. So uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that is honors geometry. Um, and that is everyone's project in terms of the symmetry and coloring. So that is the end of that interview. And uh, thank you.
Hi, uh, I'm Nora Sanders. I'm with Hal, Huskies on Web Live, and we'd like to get an interview about uh, you and what you're uh, doing here at the uh, learning exhibit. Um, so first off, uh, what class is this? This is a presentation on the Learning Center um, and what we do um, and what the Learning Center helps us uh, accomplish. Um, so in the Learning Center, um, they help, this is a typical week for me of homework, and they help break down my assignments so that it's more manageable and I can still find time for myself and um, take care of myself and what I need um, daily. So. Um, these are examples of like different organizers that can be utilized by students um, and so this if I had a test you could use something like this to figure out what works best for you and this further breaks down homework and assignments all right so uh, I know the learning center is a big part of uh, a big part of a lot of people's like time in terms of homework and study hall but like what does it like help you personally with for me, it helps me like keep me accountable for my assignments um, because um, I tend to put off assignments sometimes, um, and so they help me basically just structure my time and make sure that um, I'm doing what I need to get done and uh, also taking care of myself. Um, Emma's also per like I don't know if you want to talk. I think you covered it, yeah. Um, Renee hit all the big points there. It's just a really good resource for like, figuring out like, how to get everything done without getting crazy overwhelmed and stressed out. And I think it's a really good tool to utilize the Learning Center, yeah. So, um, yeah, I know, the, uh, like I said, the Learning Center is a big part of uh, Kent Hill in terms of its students and its academics. So um, I see that this nice to hear like you said there's homework but what is all like this about like so it's a breakdown of a typical week for me for homework um, and then broken down into these smaller pieces these are the actual assignments and their description um, this is what they'd be graded on um, and so basically it's just breaking down everything that um, I would use to complete these assignments and so so I would take something like this and I would put it into like a graphic organizer like this, just to know like, okay, during this time, I'm gonna get done like my homework for English, for so social studies, for math, and then later on, that gives me time to, you know, hang out with my friends and still have um, time for myself. All right, uh, this was a nice interview. Um, I like all the visual stuff here. Um, I like how you sort of went in depth and explained like what like the learning center does for not just you but other students here. So uh, yeah, uh, thank you for your time. Of course, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so that was Renee and Ella with the learning center, or Emma with the learning center, and how it helps students. Um, we're gonna do some more interviews here in just a minute. Thank you. Alright, uh, so I'm here with, uh, I'm here with Rose Jenkins. Hello, Rose. I'm here with Rose. Hi. Huh? Hello! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, so she's here with, I believe, AP Literature and Composition, correct? I am. Yes. So, uh, tell me, what, what did you do here for, uh, what's this assignment about? So, this assignment's called a pastiche. 
So essentially, it's a stylistic imitation of like a certain author's writing style or like a certain book. So we based our writing off of the, our summer read, which was called The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. So throughout that book, um, he consistently uses one noun and one verb. So for our writing, we were assigned to choose one noun and one verb to, consi to consistently use throughout our writing. Um, so like for example, I used she and fought like consistently throughout my writing because I was writing about like running a race. So uh, yeah, um, I actually was here a little bit earlier and she was explaining this to me. And I found it quite interesting because you had to write a whole essay on like like a, a story with just like, two, like one noun, one verb. And it was sort of interesting just because, you know, I, I wouldn't think I would be able to do that, <laughs> me personally, because I'd run out of ideas pretty quickly. But I see like some of the other people here have done that. Like, you know, like honestly, it, sort of, it must take a lot of skill to be able to do that. Like, especially with English, it's hard enough to write essays. So like, this is sort of like harder enough to write it with like one noun, one verb. So was this like a difficult assignment for you or anything? Um, well, honestly, my assignment was kind of personal because mine was about like running a race and I've had a lot of experience with like cross country. So it was kind of helpful having that personal experience and having like the, like the openness to like write about whatever you wanted. So. So, uh, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, I see that's quite nice actually. You no, know, you can write about what, sort of whatever you want, so like. You don't have to stick to any prompts or anything. So, yeah, just just the noun and the verb stuff. So, yeah, I really appreciate like the effort that was put into this. So, you know, this is a nice little thing you did. So, yeah, you know, shout out to uh, shout out to this class, AP Literature and Composition, for uh, their hard work. So, yeah, uh, that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll be back with uh, another interview in a minute. Uh, hi, uh, I'm with uh, I'm with Eli and Jess here, and uh, they're with uh, is this Global Studies Seminar? Global Studies, yeah. This is the presentation from Global Studies Seminar for our class last year. We took this as freshmen, and then this, we didn't have a um, what is this? Global year? No, this event. Oh, uh, a symposium. Symposium, that's the word. Last year, so we we're presenting this year. Uh, yeah, uh, myself, uh, Jess, Eli, and Noel, our camera person for today, with us being sophomores, we, uh, we took this class last year, and last year we had to create a, we created a uh, country, correct? Yeah, we created countries, so this is like my country right here is the CMR, um, and then we got these global briefs every, every week, I guess, yeah, and then they have problems in them for us to fix with our countries, and then we basically write up a, um, We'd write up proposals to try to fix the problems. Uh, yeah, I, re I remember doing that last year myself, actually. And it was quite interesting because we actually had to think about like economy and military and budgeting. We had to actually think about a lot of stuff in the real world despite it being a fake simulation, though. But it is something cool to learn about, um, you know. So um, was there any like inspiration in terms of like how you like, like in terms of how you ordered like your country? like? How did you choose its government and like all that? Oh, how I chose my the government style for my country was we got a list of all the different styles of government we could choose from, and then we all did research on it, and then got to pick whatever we wanted. Basically, whatever your ideal government would be for yourself is basically what we got to choose and do for. You know, uh, yeah, that's that's actually quite nice because I know for me personally, last year I did my country as sort of like a sort of like a land like I would want in the world. So, um, you know, I guess each country is different depending on the person. Like, um, like we all had to do one. So, and if we look here on the screen, like there was, like for example, we had GDP, right? Remember we had GDP. Yeah. We had GDP, which I guess that could be that country's. Is, uh, is Cranbernia, is that your land? Yep, Cranbernia is my country. And I designed it off of my island where I live in real life, Cranberry Island. And yeah, that's 
in my country is based off of my island, where I live. Yep. So yeah, we had uh, we had to work with GDP and uh, our budgeting and our military, and how the infrastructure was, and pretty much the entire country was ours to run. We had to deal with with fake scenarios that could pop up in real life, and we had to deal with what sort of seemed like a great simulation and a great like thing to get into if you're looking to get into government or at least want to get basic information about running a country. So yeah, I, I definitely remember this from last year. It was probably one of my favorite things to do. Uh, as we see here, there's a lot of this stuff from last year, like the global briefs here, the, uh, the syllabus from the class. And I do like the little projector you have going here. You know, the whole thing. So uh, yeah, overall, I think it's a great, this is a great class for freshmen to get into because it really does teach you about like the world and everything around you. So uh, yeah, this is a great presentation. Thank you for your time, Jess. Thank you for your time, Ila. All right, uh, back to another interview in uh, just a couple minutes. Norris Andrews back again uh, for another interview at the uh, learning exhibition at Kent Hill. Uh on the web live. Uh, so I'm here with Mr. Aiden. How you doing? Hey, what's going on? I'm just making beats in this class. So uh, what Aiden here is doing, I was actually here a little bit earlier and I thought it was really nice what he did. He's actually making beats on uh, what app are you using? Uh, what? What app, are you use, what app are you using to make beats? Uh, it's called FL Studio. So he's make, he's on FL Studio, and this is an independent project, correct? Yes. Yeah, uh, an independent project he's doing. He's just making beats for music, which I think is very nice. So, uh, Mr. Aiden, uh, can you tell us about a little bit of the process of making this? Um, so you can start out with anything. I usually start out with the melody, just lay it down, and then I finish with the drums, creating like the bounce, the beat. So, uh, yeah, you know, um, how long did this like take you to do? Um, any beat can take a while. Like usually, it takes a few hours for one beat, depending on the, depending on how much I add to it. So, uh, I think what, what you're doing here is actually very nice, just because I know a lot of us here enjoy hip hop music, me being one of them. So I really think that it's like good that you're at, they're making beats for like young like up and coming artists that want to like rap but they don't have anything to rap over. And I really think that it'd be a good tool in the future to use, especially if you want to rap. So, or at least want to at least sing over something. So, so I, yeah, man. Uh, I think keep up the good work, man. Yeah. Doing really good. Like I said, I was here earlier, enjoying it. So, you know. Wish we could, uh, wish we could hear some of it, but like it's in the headphones, and we'd have a bit of audio issues doing that. So, uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. We're we'll back another interview in a minute. Okay, I'll do it. All right, uh, Norris Andrews back here with the Husk on the Web Live at the Learning Exhibition here at Kent Hill. I'm here with Tenma, one of our. Uh, of our new students for this year. Um, how are you doing, Tenma? I'm doing good. Uh, in, I, I'm assuming you're with ceramics, correct? No, it's sculpture class. Oh, sculpture, actually, right? Yeah. So if you look here, you see some of the great sculptures they've made. Like, you see this one with the cat. Is this, uh, what's this one supposed to be? What? What's this one supposed to be? Um, it's still in process. And um, we pour liquid crane inside this, and then it turns like this, or this, and um, after we fire this, it turns like white, like this, and then it's hotter, and then we paint it, and finally we grate it, oh no, fire it again, and it turns like this one. Well, that is a very nice sculpture, I will say. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, sculpture class seems pretty interesting. I mean, that, it's a unicorn. It's a bird. Ooh, Dylan made that. Hero. So a hero, since you're here too, like, what, what, uh, what's like the whole, like, what inspired you to make like this piece? This is yours, right? Oh yeah, this is mine. Uh, this, we have to make 
The assignment is to make a trophy for a specific people. And I made this for Miss Petrillo, being a very good dorm parents for us. I'm living Davis, and she has a baby, so this baby and Miss Petrillo are the, my theme for my sculpture. So I made a trophy for her. Oh, it's a very nice piece and a very nice story behind it. I really do appreciate the hard work here. Especially because you got to make it yourself. You had to fire it, you know, paint it all, polish it. So I really am loving this. This is. It's actually really nice. It takes a lot of skill to do this, especially with the amount of patience you got to take and stuff. So, yeah. Um, anything else on it? What? Anything else on it? No. no. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's that. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back with one more interview in a few minutes. All right, um, I'm here with Chelsea. I'm here with Summer, and I'm here with Alana. Uh, and this is, I'm assuming, Spanish class, correct? Yeah, intermediate Spanish. Intermediate Spanish. Um, and um, you can see this nice poster board. This nice, this is this nice uh, slideshow. Uh, can you sort of uh, explain like what's uh, the whole premise of this is? Wait, what was the question? Uh, can you explain like uh, what like intermediate Spanish is all about, and sort of like what the premise of like this is? Okay, yeah. So it's. Equivalent to Spanish 3 at a normal high school, but for our project, we had a $3,000 budget to travel to any Spanish-speaking country. Um, that did not include flights, though, so we really got to desi design what we wanted to do, and then you write about it in Spanish. Um, you have to include five places, two interesting facts, and three cultural foods, and then we'll eventually make a slideshow to go along with a written piece. Yeah, it's really nice. I've, I, I'm loving the effort and attention to detail this is, especially with all it being written in Spanish, besides with the exception of that. But I really am liking it because, you know, it, it's, it is hard learning another language. I took Spanish last year, so I know how hard it is to see, like, the speaking, the Spanish-speaking nations right there. Uh, like, you know, it does, take, uh, it does take a lot of effort to learn about another culture yeah. in other countries, learn another language. So, um, yeah, anything else you want to say? So this word here, this is what I'm looking at. So I'm assuming the country one of y'all chose is Chile, correct? Yeah, a lot of And so this is like the culture of uh, Chile, correct? Yeah. You kind of have a little bit of background to go along with why you chose that country. And like, there's some differences. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no. Um, no, I, I really do like like yeah. what y'all did. Like this is like this is cool. Like I said, like learning another language is hard, and I, I couldn't do this. Like writing a, a whole, you have to budget a vacation in Spanish. Yeah. So. Like, but I think it's a good way to like put our knowledge of Spanish into a fun project to keep us learning, rather than just like sitting down with a book and like learning all the different terms and like pr present, past. So, future. I think it's a good way to kind of like incorporate all of that into one project. Yeah, and I'm liking it here. No? Really cool. loving it. So, um, yeah, I guess that'll do for. Uh, thank y'all for your time. Thank you. <laughs> um, coming up with a bonus interview in a few minutes. Thank you. All right, uh, Norris Andrews, with, this is a bonus interview before we go. I'm here with the big boss man himself, head of school, Mr. Chris Cheney. How you doing, Mr. Cheney? I'm great. This is so exciting to be here and to see student learning that's not a test or an SAT score, but it's really about reflecting on what they've done and so many different cool projects here today. Um, I'm just really excited to see, and it's student-centered. This isn't about the teachers. This is about the learners. With this being the first family weekend um, since 2019, um, with, with myself and Noel here, our camera person, being uh, sophomores, this is our first time really experiencing family weekend. 
in like sort of how this all goes, and I'm really liking the flow of how everything is set up here. So, um, you know, um, what can you say about like the sort of work that we've done since COVID to get everything, something like this sort of back on track to where it used to be? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm so proud of our community for how they've handled COVID, all the precautions that our students and families have taken um, to make sure that we're safe, whether it's through making good judgments, wearing masks, um, being vaccinated. Um, because what's really important about boarding school and about school is our connections. Like, it's not a solo thing. It's about families and advisors and teachers and students, and we're a partnership, and we're all trying to connect um, and learn together and to help teenagers uh, with their learning so that they grow and they're ready for the world that they're heading into. I think that is a really good point because especially like myself, someone who sort of showed up on this campus uh, 13 months ago, you know, not knowing anyone, not even being from Maine, like I've never been to Maine before, showing up and over the last like year just had so many connections and so many different people. And I think it like really goes to show like like the amount of like community and family here with the amount of, with the learning exhibit. And because at the end of the day, we all have something to learn from each other. So I do really like like what we have going here. So uh, what, what can you say about like just, I don't know, just the journey we've been on since, I don't know, the beginning of this year, you know, this year being very different from last year. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I think that, you know, we are community and we're a community that is small enough where everybody knows everybody, but we're big enough that we, that we can learn together and we can be really robust in our programming and our, the types of offerings. If you walk around the room, there's offerings from so many different areas, not just traditional English, math, science, language, but arts and really creative projects and different things that are beyond the traditional subject areas, which I think is really cool. No, I think that's very cool as well, because you know, we have many programs to offer here and we've sort of had new ones this year. And I really do think it is cool to see not only just class projects, but student-led projects and like independent studies and everything. And everyone has different interests. So I really do think that it's getting shown and expressed here in a communal way today. So yeah, anything else to say? Yeah, and I, did, I think you just, you just made the point that Charlotte started us off with. It's not about the end product or presenting something that I'm the last word or it's the final thing but it's a conversation, it's a dialogue, it's thinking about how we learn, what, did we, what went well, what didn't go well, and how can we continue to be better in the future. And I'm, I'm really proud of so many students here who did so many really amazing projects and the teachers that guided them through that, instead of them telling them what to do, but actually acting more as a coach and mentor to help them to, to learn and be a meta learner. Yeah, I think that really is a good point. So uh, yeah, we're gonna end it here. Uh, thank you for your time, Mr. Cheney. Really love the explanations you gave here. And uh, yeah, thank you. That will do it for today's interviews. Um, Make me look good. <laughs> I'm uh, Norris Andrews uh, for Husky and the Web Live, um, and we'll see you later today with uh, is it girls? I think girls varsity soccer and field hockey. So thank you.